look now at the impact identity. The impact identity is an abbreviation which stands for the impact which can be um, understood by population times effluence times consumption times technology. This is more a kind of means, uh, like a, a theoretical model to understand. I mean, while IRS was literally using it to calculate down, it's more the idea to understand the multiple factors which are, can be used or are key of describing the impact which we have. Um, another name for the impact identity is the Kaya identity based on um, the author who came up with it. Um, and it is the basic origin of it is coming back to the iPad identity, which Ehrlich and Holdren were coming up in 1972. But you can read more about this in Chauncey Ayer's book. So let us have a look at the variables now in the impact identity. So I is standing as the name is saying for the variable impact. So we know already measures for this, like the ecological footprint, uh, the Kaya identity. So how to reduce the impact? is like indirectly by reducing P, A, C, or T. So let's have a look at P now. P is for population, and I mean the measure for population is, I think, quite straightforward. This is the number of population existing. And then strategies for reduction of uh, family planning is as, per IOS, is, of, is as per IOS, the family planning, of course. A is standing for affluence, so affluence means like how affluent are the people, are is this population, so what is the consumption per capita. Um, here, um, the Kaya identity actually introduces literally the, the turnover, so the, the how much GDP is there, um, and then the book doesn't really give a strategy for reducing it, while well, we will discuss about this later. C is then standing for the intensity of resource consumption, so C for consumption, um, which means like per unit of affluence, so per GDP dollar, which we have, how much do we really consume, especially in terms of, of materialistic or material uh, matter. So here we can reduce that variable by looking into conservation, so saying how can we actually reduce consumption in particular of any physical goods. And then T is standing for technology, so or the inefficiency of technology, and then uh, or the efficiency of technology. And this is looking into impact per unit of consumption. So if we consume one hour of television, like how much electricity does this take more or less? So here technological innovation can actually increase efficiency and therefore decrease the impact created by the technology or the impact created altogether so and decrease the inefficiency of technology. So actors and factors in reduction are now, when we look into population, it's the parents who choose to have less children, um, something we'll work on closer in another chapter on impact identity population aspect. When it comes to A, the affluence, it would be the workers, as per IRS, who choose to work less. So that would be this idea of a voluntarily working less, so that you have less income. While this is counter the system, but this would go too far for that topic, still in the theoretical idea, that would be the thing to do. C would be the consumers, so uh, we as consumers who choose to dematerialize. And then T would be to producers, in this case also you as sport culture and event management managers who try to increase the efficiency and therefore reduce uh, the total impact. So very roughly, because we will go into this in detail in separate slides, is population is, you have to understand basically that there are like two rough, ideas of the Malthusians who think or who, who claim the theory saying resources are finite and the growth will eventually lead to a collapse because we are the population is growing exponentially but the resources are not growing exponentially. Then there is the cornucopian idea is saying okay we will uh, we know that resources are finite, but we will, our intelligence or, or the way we humans are intelligent as a group and as individual will enable us to find ways how we overcome this limit by either not reducing our consumption or by, by increasing the limit using technology or whatever. So there are various approaches to the cornucopians. 
So you can say the Malthusians are the pessimists, who saying we have to reduce population, and the Cornucopians are the optimists. Um, so population growth is mainly happening currently in the Global South, and even there, as you will see in the next chapter, it is not uh, as we might assuming. And then, of course, family planning is key, and John C. Ayers gives a few ideas in his book on China and the A and C is now the affluence and consumption is the world total pattern of consumption together. So consumption growth has actually replaced the population growth as primary reason for environmental degradation. And the APCs of our sustainability are automobiles, airplanes, beefs and coal. Uh, transportation, fooding and housing makes up approximately 70% of the world impact. And then we can summarize this as the consumerism, which will go. Consumerism is defined as finding a meaning, find, find meaning, contentment, and acceptance through what they consume. So we will come back to this topic in the social sustainability later and how in our dominant culture we satisfy needs through consumption. So a corporation can choose to increase consumption by advertisement, planned obsolescence, so to program or design something in a way that it will fall apart after a certain number of usages or a few years. And then, uh, of course, by events saying you have to always have bigger and more. And uh, we have it also here, so the same event can't be again happening. So these are like classical things you learn in management theory and you learn in marketing, but which are actually um, increasing consumption because that is what the system needs of us at the moment. Um, so here, the biggest solution would be to dematerialize, so to say to avoid disposable products, to downside, or to create more sustainable structures in general, more sustainable cities, events, or similar and I think this is one of the key questions, actually, which we will have to answer in, in the last two models of this course, saying how can we apply dematerialization strategies in the sector of sport, culture and event management. Last but not least, um, we do have the technology. And technology is like, Chanzi uh, Ayas calls it a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it increases economic capital normally, but it also tends to decrease the environmental capital. There is something called, there are like two, I think, key theories when we talk about technology, which you should be aware about. The one is the Kuznet curve, which you see on the right of that uh, screen, which is, it has been shown in the past that with the increase of the GDP per capita, in the beginning, until a certain turning point, we also normally see an increase of the level of environment degradation. So almost every country, once they start to grow their GDP or have economic growth, which is like promoted as that solution for wealth, which I would contradict, but that would go too far in that lecture. You can join my, uh, you can join my elective on rethinking economy in the third semester. Um, but it is shown that with every economic growth, the environmental degradation increases until a certain turning point is reached where the population is having a certain awareness and having certain structures of disposal and so on, so that uh, the environmental degradation reduces with the increase of the GDP. So that is one that is called the Kuznet curve, so that is something you can keep in mind for later. Another thing is called the Jevons paradox, and the Jevons paradox is basically saying that, or is he figured out that even though an increased efficiency occurs, this increased efficiency normally increases the affluence and consumption, so that the increases in efficiency counterweight, or the increases in, in the consumption is counterweighted by uh, the decrease in, or by the increase in uh, affluence and consumption. In other words, if we invent an electricity-saving TV, uh, there is not less electricity used for watching TV, but people would watch more TV altogether. Or if you uh, develop a car which is using less fuel per 100 kilometers, 
people would simply drive more. They wouldn't drive the same, but they would increase driving. And that has been observed for many new technologies. So when you make a technology more efficient, uh, you don't reduce the overall impact, but people consume simply more so that the overall consumption is still staying the same. Yeah, that brings me to the trends, the current growth in population and um, so currently they're keeping the base. Even though we uh, consume less and there is an uh, increase in technology, the population growth and the affluence growth is outweighing it. So at the moment we're kind of in a status quo and a stable, stable state. Um, from this, John C.I.S. concludes that developing countries, so the countries of the Global South, as I like to call them, must focus on decreasing population growth. And I think that is already quite successful, as we can see in the next chapter while developed countries have to focus on decreasing the consumption, especially material consumption.